guys. Very funny comment coming out of your all over today. I want you guys to put your hands together for Mr. Neil Steinberg! Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, Gap again on stage, clearly. I've been married to someone better looking to be for 12 years, and we're used to getting up stage in my own events. So this is uh, but, uh, you know, my wife and I celebrated a pretty special moment a couple months ago. We, uh, we found out that our eight-year-old daughter got admitted to one of New York City's top gifted and talented programs. <laughs> but the, uh, the problem about having a kid who knows some shit is she knows some shit. And she observes me. She takes everything that bothers my wife about me and puts her own special spin on it. <laughs> like last week, she found me doing my usual, putting the dishes in the sink, dirty. And she's looking at me. She's lingering and judging. She says, you do this because you hold it against mommy because she takes all of her money and goes out and spends it on martinis and sushi. <laughs> so mission one is I need to change my credit card passwords. So, other than my daughter's name. But you know, naturally as your child starts questioning you, you do the responsible thing and you relitigate your own childhood. And my parents are amazing people. My dad's here and I give it up for Alan Steinberg. about being a parent is watching your parents as grandparents. But I think even he'd be willing to admit that uh, he and my mom were learning on the job. <laughs> and you know, I've tried different ways, and you know, many parents will try to shield their kids from this, but I routinely walk my daughter through 20 years worth of therapy copays on a regular basis. <laughs> and I've tried many different ways to do this, and the most effective way i found is we, uh, we play the, the child's game, Two Truths and a Lie. Here's the problem, my kid thinks they're all lies. <laughs> So, you know, my dad has been uh, married and divorced three times. <laughs> each, uh, each one is their own unique story. The, uh, the last one, he got married on New Year's Day for tax purposes. <laughs> that is the truth, you can find him afterwards. But, you know, every year, come 11.55, as the ball's about to drop since my daughter is four years old, I give her a shake. Yeah. And I say, let me tell you a story about Grandpa. <laughs> and you know, but during COVID, like most of us, he got very in touch with his own mortality. And he calls me one day, he says, I'm sending you my will in the mail. Now I'm a hip hop fan, and I will tell you the three greatest diss tracks are Hit Em Up, Ether by Nas, and Alan Steinberg's Funeral Instructions. <laughs> These were 17 pages of grudges and grievances. If this one shows up, ask them to leave. This one can speak for two minutes at most. I never like this one, and it's okay that you tell them. You know, but he's, he's the best. But you know, he's also both very generous and funny about money. Whenever we enter an Uber, he has a unique ability to both boldly mispronounce the driver's name while announcing, Mamor, I'm leaving you a very big tip. And you know, based on his rating, TBD. But you know, it's not like I'm without my own failures. Um, I'm a secret smoker. If you, uh, if you go inside my cabinet in the apartment, I have nine packs of parliaments with uh, 17 cigarettes left in each of them. And every Saturday night I say, I'm too good for this, I'm not doing it again. And you know, come 11.45 and uh, three martinis later, it's another $19 at the bodega. <laughs> But you know, I'm, uh, I'm also a gambler. I like to say I'm a functional gambler. Um, my wife likes the time I wins the household expenses. We're out with another couple and I'm clearly firing in action. She's like, Neil paid for childcare this month. Or uh, Con Ed was courtesy the Philadelphia Eagles. But uh, for my daughter, I do try to hide this from her. It's, it's not the right thing to do. But she gets suspicious when I'm rooting for a team that's not one of my squads. And I always tell her a simple answer. They're Jewish. <laughs> We, uh, we suddenly have many great Jews in sports. Um, recent favorites of mine are uh, Masters champion John Rahm, the, uh, the entire Alabama Crimson Tide football team, <laughs> and, uh, and a personal favorite of mine was 2020 Kentucky Derby winner Authentic. <laughs> and this was a big win for my people because he defied two myths at once. Um, the first, that Jews are not fast, and um, the second, that we have small dicks. <laughs> Because, uh, as we all know, Authentic was hung like a horse. <laughs> but, you know, conversely, when I'm rooting against someone a little too hard, she also gets suspicious. I have no choice to tell her. 
they're anti-Semites. <laughs> and I know this is going to cause problems, and it's going to cause problems soon. Um, my day of reckoning is coming. We've got a uh, back to school night at this gifted and talented school. And my wife's going to be ready for all of your adorations of parents. She's going to come in ready to hear how great we are. And the teacher's going to lean in and say, Mrs. Steinberg, your daughter's doing great. She's doing great in science, great in math, social studies. We got some concerns. She, uh, she told the class that the January 6th riots were a mastermind by Travis Kelsey, oh. Steph Curry, and LeBron James. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I'm sleeping on the couch, so thanks, you guys.